Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go down to uh, a city that seems to be mourning their football team for oh, the last ooh. few years. And uh, oh. Luke Combs actually put out a tweet. <laughs> yeah. And Luke Combs, uh, I think he just likes to have a good time, likes to write great songs, sing mm -hmm. great songs. He likes to punt cups. He likes to shotgun beers. What? Uh, Dab. He loves, oh, yeah. loves the App State Mountaineers. He doesn't. Just loves having a good time. Loves representing for North Carolina. And what are we doing to the Panthers? <laughs> No first-round pick for McCaffrey a few years back, and now none for Burns? Are we just firebombing the whole team here or what? I usually don't comment on these kinds of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. Luke comes one of the most positive guys I think anybody's ever met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for him to get to the point of like, what? what's going on? I know we had the AI Panther jumping around. To, that was cool. So has cool. there been anything good since then? Joining no. us now, boots on the ground, friend of the program, ladies and gentlemen, Sheena Quick. Yay! Yay! Sheena, great to see you again. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, we're fantastic. Seemingly Panthers fans. Not, I mean, Luke Combs is a guy who's not just going to go, Oof, what are we doing here? Burns franchise tagged. Then he's traded for a second and fifth. Gets $95 million Ooh. with the New York Giants. Carolina Panthers say, we ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. Now, bringing an offensive lineman, I do believe, to protect Bryce Young. But what is the overall feeling in town about Bryce Burns being gone, McCaffrey being gone, and seemingly not much in return for everything that you kind of sacrificed over the last couple of years? Well, they feel like they got fleeced, and rightfully so, because now you have five holes left on that starting defense that finished fourth in the league. And everybody's like, okay, what are we doing? Yeah, we may score a couple extra points, but will our defense be able to stop a nosebleed? And it's kind of head scratching because they did retain EJ Evero, but they left him scraps to deal with. So everyone feels like they kind of got fleeced in that deal, only getting a second in next year's fifth and only moving up a couple of spots in the fifth round pick. Um, coming up next month. So it is a, is it code red like Luke Combs' tweet there? Because he said, I need a long neck ice cold beer because I got a broken heart because he's Carolina Panthers. Is it code red down there? And how do they fix this? We just got to have faith. Code red. We got to have faith that Canales can it's make Bryce Young great. Red. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sheena. I mean, it's, it's definitely a uh, cause for concern. I think he needs to swap out that beer and grab some whiskey because it, this might be a <laughs> tough season right. <laughs> going ahead. You know, they did add some um, some some depth in that interior offensive line, which was absolutely important. But they could have done that and still done right by Brian Burns. Uh, they also lost Frankie Louvu yesterday to the commanders. And they're expected to trade or release both Von Bell and Dante Jackson. And they lost Yitor Gross Mato. So I don't even know how many DNs are on the contract at this point. It might be like two. Phenomenal names across the board. They're all out the door in Carolina. Connor's got a question yeah. about the decision making. Yeah, Sheena, is this all Dan Morgan? Is this him just kind of getting his hands on the team and starting the new era in, in Carolina with his guys and Canales' guys? Or is Tepper still involved um, a lot like he has been in the past? Well, Dan Morgan said that same day that you guys said he wasn't blinking in that presser, he said, I'm not a yes man. So I have to, he, he told me, he said, you're going to see, you're going to see, you can ask David Tepper. He pointed to David Tepper. He said, I ain't no yes man. Those are the words out of his mouth. And I do think that this is him putting his stamp on the team. And Canales also, he told us in Indy a couple weeks ago that he doesn't have any type of emotional attachment to any of these players. So that's, at, that's his advantage right now. And we're seeing that with some of those beloved names heading out the door. Yeah, and in return, you can normally get some stuff for this type of stuff. But whenever you're hearing that the coach is saying, we got no emotional attachment to anybody, other teams are hearing that as well. And you're potentially losing leverage by the words <laughs> that are coming out of your mouth. But hey, yeah. I've never run a team. Yeah. I have no idea. But with Canales, we're big fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He seemed like cool, handsome. His life story is one where he's had to overcome some stupid decisions and pitting himself in a bad spot. What he did with Baker is make him a bunch of money last year down in Tampa Bay. Will he be able to yeah. do that with Bryce? Or Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Sheena. So we've heard that um, Tepper is basically, he's learned his lesson. He's going to kind of take a step back a little bit and let Dan Morgan and Dave Canales kind of run the show. But with kind of what they're left with here and you look at the uh, the NFC South, like is, is Dave Canales just going to get fired in <laughs> two years like the last eight guys they've had? <laughs> Um, are going to? Well, and like, Are they going to be just at the same spot they're at right now uh, in a couple years looking for a new coach and hoping Bryce Young's the guy? Well, Tepper told us the same thing when he hired Frank Wright, and we see, you know, we have all these reports coming out once Frank Wright was shown the door. I do think he will have more, I, think, I do think Canales will have more grace 
Um, mainly because, like you said, they don't want to fire another head coach one, two years into the tenure because that instability is the reason that they are where they are now. That's what basically steamrolled Brian Burns's value because two coaches, head coaches ago, we were told that he was a priority. But with all of this changing and out the door, I think that alone will give Dave Canales a lot of grace. And um, like I told you guys at Super Bowl, I, I don't think that this team is going to be highly competitive next season uh maybe a season it's going to take a while to fix the mess that has kind of be optimistic i guess built up over the last couple seasons diamond rings and football teams torn this boy apart Mm -hmm. he's talking about the panthers yes he is (laughs) he's talking about the carolina panthers yeah and this guy family the panthers into a musical well this is luke combs own words yeah Mm -hmm. these are luke combs words yeah crushed now that he's football pundit I mean, yeah, we can do it. We just got to kind of look into the history yeah. of this entire thing. Last question here for you, Sheena. We appreciate yeah. your time from D Butt. Sheena, you were much more optimistic last year going into the season. We need you to turn that optimism up a little bit more for your Panthers. Just but a little you, bit. You built up a little bit in the, in the offensive line, but um, you mentioned Burns and a lot of those starters been going from the defense. I think Burns' entire draft class is going from the team now. Who are the core, yep. those pillar guys left? We just had Sal Paolo. He was talking about the core four in Philly. Who are those guys left in the Carolina locker room that you can kind of mm. that you would like to build around? Obviously, outside of the young uh, Bryce Young. That's you hit the nail on the head. They don't have that. They don't have that. I sat there when San- FanDuel came into town last week. I heard Jonathan Stewart and um, Luke Keekley kind of just chopping it up, telling all these stories of locker room stories and, and on field stories, and you just don't have that in this locker room. And it has you haven't had that in the last couple of seasons, and I don't see the moves from yesterday helping that going forward now i was optimistic i'm not trying to put a clown nose on myself again i'm not trying to put my face on the jordan pride me i'm not trying to do any of that so i'm cautiously optimistic hey you're a journalist we appreciate that we appreciate you so much ladies and gentlemen (laughs) sheena quick thank you Sheena. you can find sheena on 1340 am fox sports uh she also crushes on her show every time Yeah. yeah she has become our carolina panthers news Plug and the thing about it sounds terrible down there. Yeah. Oh my god, bad, really bad. She's but, been saying that for three years. I feel like yeah, since <laughs> our first so- conversation with her, she was optimistic about Frank Wright coming in there though. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Right the coaching, too. coaching staff, yep. the coaching staff mm-hmm. that they had. Caldwell. Here we go. Yeah, pro days. They were the bell of the ball. Remember, because they had a number one pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tepper's at these pro days. McCown's at these pro days. Frank Wright. They at had this a call. taking photos. Remember them? They were selfie yeah. videos. Yeah. So we're having Sheena on. Hey, how do we feel? Carolina Panthers fans would yeah. love C.J. Stroud on the team. And after the joke about playing basketball against each other, they're starting to think this is where the number one overall pick is headed. Then Bryce Young's thing uh, pro day happens. They wouldn't mind Bryce Young on a team either. The Carolina Panthers were like, here we go. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, you earned the number one pick this yeah. year. It wasn't just that no, you traded no. it. And you don't even have it. Uh-huh. And Christian McCaffrey leaves, you don't get a damn thing for oh, it. No. Ryan Burns leaves, you get a second and a fifth for it. You had him franchise tagged. And under franchise tag rules, I think there's like some other stuff that you could potentially well, the, get for that. They had an offer for two ones a year ago. And it's whatever. like, what are you? And Luke Combs, oh. I can't. I'm I done. can't. <laughs> These people want me to write a new song. How the hell am I supposed to write a new song? Do you see how inept my football team is? I'm watching all these other teams make these plays. Mm-hmm. Luke Combs is saying, mm-hmm. I travel around country, or city yeah. to city. How's your team? Great. Oh, of course they are. Oh, okay. Mm. How's your team? How, how's, we sold 100 tickets for our last home game. Yep. Mm. They had 100 tickets. Do you remember that? Yep. 50 cents. Empty stadium. Absurd. It was an F1 race. Yeah. That's, whoa, whoa. It, it was. Yeah. That's literally what but they were saying. No. It was more entertaining than that. Was it? There was nobody in that stadium. And now offseason free agency comes, and Morgan's like, hey, look, I wasn't here for all that, so we're going to have to go through some more terrible times. <laughs> okay? And then mm-hmm. once we get through that, you're going to have to have faith in me, football guy, Canales football brain, actually. We're going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. It's just a blind optimism that you have, have to have. <laughs>